Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at a game called Sabika. Now when I first picked up this game, I really wasn't sure what I was getting myself into. The back of the box says you take on the role of a noble during the Nazareth dynasty and are contributing to the construction of the Alhambra. Right off the bat, I was interested. Having something set in a historical time and place that I really don't know a lot about always intrigues me as I want to learn more. Then I started going through the rulebook and learned to learn the mechanisms and I realized that there wasn't just one rondel, but there were three rondels in this game. And I think rondelles are a very interesting mechanism, where all the actions are kind of on a circle, and on your turn you're going to be moving your worker clockwise around that circle to select the next action you want to take. And the more I read about the mechanisms, the more I wanted to get this game to the table to see really how well it worked together. So, will this game be as magnificent as the Alhambra, or should it just be buried in the sand? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back with my final thoughts on Sabika. So here's Sabika set up for four players. Randomly draw and place one raw material onto each appropriate space on the main board. Now the raw material tokens are double-sided. One side shows the raw material and the other is the good side. Make sure they're always on the raw material side. The narrator token is placed on its track and this is going to be the timer of the game. Then you're going to be placed three random wishes, A, B, and C. The major projects are placed to the left and right of the rondelle so that the purple on the left and all the blue ones are on the right. The storehouses are shuffled and split into two piles and turn over two from each pile. The minor construction cards are shuffled and then draw the top four cards. The minor poem cards are shuffled and draw one more than the number of players. Shuffle the major poems and draw two for each player. Shuffle up the city tiles and randomly place one on each of the cities and add one seal to the left of each city. Finally, shuffle the trade cards and randomly draw one for the game. For each player, they will take their board and their pieces of their color. They get an architectural balance card to be placed above their board. Their four workers, which are the two master builders, one merchant and one poet, are placed on their board. The prestige marker starts at 5, the priority token starts at 0, the favor token starts on the starting space of the Sultan's favor track. Each player is also dealt two starting tiles, which they will secretly choose one and discard the other. Now these are all going to be revealed at the same time and will show you various things. In the middle are your starting resources and any track movements. The bottom is their number. The player with the highest number is the player who gets to go first and they're going to be getting the number of dinars as shown on their starting tile in the first position. Then the person to their left is second, and they'll receive dinars based on their starting tile in the second position, etc. Stack the prior tokens in player order with the first player on top. The game is played over five rounds, and in each round the players will take four turns to place their workers and perform an action. Each rondelle focuses on different areas. The outer rondelle deals with building the major and minor constructions, along with collecting resources. The middle rondelle focuses on exporting of goods to the various cities, and the inner rondelle focuses on carving of the poems. Now before we get into gameplay, let's quickly look at some of the basics of the game. There are four materials of the game, gypsum, wood, marble, and glazed ceramics. When using these materials to build, you'll receive prestige points based on the materials you give up. There are also three raw materials and their corresponding goods on the opposite side of the token. When you get a raw material, you must take it from the rondelle. If it's not on the rondelle, you cannot take the raw material. You're then going to take the raw material and place it on your matching processing spot on your board. If you had a second raw material of the same type, instead of adding it to your board, you're going to flip over the raw material and make it a good and place it into one of your storehouses. Now storehouses are where you're going to store each item, either material or good. Dinars do not need to go into the storeroom, and raw materials go, of course, onto your processing space. Each storehouse will have a number of boxes, and that will show you how many items it can hold. At the beginning of the game, each storehouse can only store one item, but you can upgrade them to store more. So now let's get on to the gameplay. Each round is split into the action phase and then the end of round phase. During the action phase, each player will activate one of their workers and perform an action. First, a player will choose an active worker. That's going to be one that is upright and either work or rest that worker. If you choose a worker to work, you're going to move it forward on its rondelle. Now each worker type can only go on its designated rondelle. Builders in the outer, merchants in the middle, and poets in the inner. Wherever the worker ends up, that is the primary or secondary action you can perform. You can only ever have one of your workers in each space, but multiple people can have workers in the same space. Moving your worker may cost dinars. You get one to two spaces for free, but each additional space is going to cost one dinar. Now, if your worker is in the workshop, you can place it on any space on its rondelle for free. If your worker ends up in the space with other players' workers, you must play one dinar for each other worker. You're then going to take the action of the space you've landed on, then lay your worker down. Now, instead of moving your active worker, you can instead rest them. 
Lay them down in your action shop, earn three dinar, but you're going to lose one prestige point. Now you must rest your worker if that worker cannot take out any action. Players continue in a clockwise manner until all the workers are inactive. Every space in the rondelle allows you to carry out a primary action, and some of them will also allow you to do a secondary action. Let's quickly go through the primary actions. The quarry action allows you to take three goods of the indicated types. So for this one, you can take three gypsum, or three wood, or any combination of gypsum and wood. The storehouse action allows you to either take one of the two face-up storehouses that are next to you, or activate one of your storehouses. If you take a storehouse, place it on top of an existing storehouse. Each storehouse can only be upgraded twice. If this is the first time you're upgrading that storehouse, you gain one prestige. If it's the second time, you're going to get two prestige points. Then you receive the bonus on this new tile. The second option is to activate one of your storehouses. That is, receive the bonus printed on it. The next action is the market action. Receive two dinar, then you can take up to two trades. You can either buy, sell, or trade goods. You can use the chart on the board to see what the buying and selling prices are, and materials can be traded up or down by one level as outlined again on the chart. The construction action allows you to build a major or minor construction. During the first era of the game, only the era 1 major construction tiles can be built, and later on only the second era 1 can be built. To build a major construction, it will cost you one gypsum. That is mandatory. You can then spin up to two different materials. Each material must be different. For each material you give up, gain points based on the material. Then choose which major construction you want. Receive the bonus from left to right. So you're first going to gain Sultan's Favor and gain the rewards from the space you land on the, on the Sultan's Favor's track. Then receive the right bonus from the tile. When done, place it face down in front of you. If you want to build a minor construction, it will cost the good that is printed on the card, and that's mandatory. You can then also add up to two different materials. And again, all the materials must be different. Gain points on the material you used. You will then place it to either the left or the right of your architectural balance line. If you place it so the patterns match, you receive the appropriate bonus as outlined on your card. In the middle rondelle, the first action is the export action. Choose a city you do not already have a ship in. You need to pay the cost for each route that you're going to cross, starting with the closest city you have the ship in. Then you export one or two of your goods to the city. You'll earn one prestige and one prior point for each good exported. Now if the good is in demand in the city, as shown on its banner, then you're going to receive an additional prestige point and prior point. Place your ship on the left side of the city and receive the indicated bonus. If you're the first player to export to the city, take the seal. A seal can be used as a coin when buying something, or it can be turned in to pay for a missing prior point at the end of the round. To perform the consolidate action, choose a city where you already have a ship on the left and move it to the right. If there's already another player ship there on the right, they will receive one prestige and one prior point. If the city tile is red, receive that bonus immediately. If it's blue, you receive nothing now, but will receive something during the end of round phase. The produce action allows you to activate a city bonus where you have a ship. Then, then you can process two raw materials into goods. On the inner rondelle, you can carve a poem, either major or minor. Choose a poem and pay its cost. It will be in dinars. Blue is one dinar plus one additional dinar for each blue poem you already have. Red is two dinar plus one for each other red you have. And grays are four plus one for every other gray you have. They can only ever have a maximum of two gray poems. In addition to the dinars, you must also pay material as shown. So either gypsum, wood, or marble. Plus, you have the option to pay an additional different material. Gain prestige points for the material you spent, then place the poem in the appropriate side of your board. The reactivate action allows you to reactivate one of your red poems to get that bonus again. Finally, the last primary action is the artisanal labor action, which you receive three coins, plus one coin for every two poems you have. There are secondary actions around the board as well. If there's a raw material or a different material on it, you can take it. If the spot is empty, you can perform the action printed on the board. If you take the secondary action, you must pay the price of the dinar based on which of your workers took the action. Now these actions are optional, and when you land on the action spaces, you can either take the primary action or secondary action first. When all players have activated the workers, we go to the end of round phase. First, any player with a ship on the right side of a city that has a blue banner will receive the income based on that banner. Next, advance the narrator token. If the token moves on top of the Sultan's Wish token, move the Wish token to the tower and score all the tiles in the tower. The Sultan's Wishes are only scored when a new one is added. Finally, starting with the first player, each player must pay the mandatory amount of prias as shown under the narrator token. For each prior you have to spend, you can move your prior token back one space, or play two dinar, or discard a seal, or you lose one prestige point. Next, you're going to restock the board with the raw materials, goods, fill up the major poem cards, minor construction cards, and new storehouses. Now the player who is on the lead of the prior track gets the first player token. If it's a tie, it's whosoever token is on top. 
At the end of the first era, you're going to remove all the era 1 construction tokens. The game ends after the action phase of round 5. There's no end of round phase, but it's replaced by an end of game phase. Get income as normal, move the final wish and score all 3 wishes, pay your pariahs as required, then each player scores their major poems, you're going to score the trade card, then you're going to score for any leftover resources, seals, and dinars. And the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about Sabika. So, theme and components. I really enjoyed the theme of this one. It felt different. Yes, you're still building something, but it really worked here. You are collecting resources to build specific items like gardens or doors or fountains. You are sailing to different cities to open up the trade routes, and you're getting poems to carve into stone. So though it is another Euro game about building something great, I thought it really worked well for this game. As for the components, again, I thought they were very nice as well. I do wish the main board was a little smaller as it is quite the table hog, and the color palette is muted and there's a lot of tans, but for a game set in this time and place, it kind of feels somewhat appropriate. But at first glance, it's a lot of tan when it's on the table. The wooden pieces were good, it was easy to tell the different workers apart, and I felt the iconography was pretty good, and I do like that there was a reference at the back of the rulebook. Speaking of the rulebook, it did a very good job of explaining the game, and I always appreciate the back of the rulebook having a round summary. So all in all, if you can get over the tanness of the game, the components are quite nice. So let's talk about the gameplay. For me, this is where this game really, really shines. Everything in the gameplay just worked so well for me, and that's kind of going to give you an indication of how this review is going to go. The main mechanism of the rondelle just works. Every rondelle was a different set of actions. The outer rondelle had to do with resources and building things. The middle one dealt with your boat, and the inner one with the scrolls. It just made a lot of sense to me, and it made it easier for me to teach. I love the options when it was my turn. I can move my worker as far as I want, so I can get to any action. But can I afford it? I really appreciate that they always had an action to take just about any action I wanted, but I just might have to pay for it, and money is tight in this game. And that tightness of the money, with the feeling of being a slightly more restrictive game, is something I really like. You don't know how you're going to score your points when you first sit down in the game. There is a, a travel card which changes from game to game, but so do the grey scrolls, which are end of game scoring. But doing any of them is work, and you need to have a plan fairly early on, so you don't get kind of left behind. And that is something I always enjoy in games. I want to go for that end of game scoring uh, scroll sooner, so I need money. So I need to take that action there, but it's too far and I don't want to spend the extra money to get there, and the other player is already there. So if I take this action now, and hopefully the other player will move their piece off the spot that I want, so that I will be able to make enough money to buy the scroll my subsequent turn, of course, as long as no one takes the scroll action that I need. And that rondelle is, for me, where a lot of the tension in the player interaction comes in this game. You need to be watching what everyone else is doing and trying to figure out what you need to do. Player order can be critical as well, so managing your pariah points is something not to be ignored. Sometimes after all the actions have been taken, you're going to see that you need to go first the next round, so you can get the exact action that you want. So, do you forego giving up some of those pariah points and instead play the Sultan in some other ways? Maybe using your precious money, or maybe even giving up some points, just to stay first on that pariah track so you can go first next round. And sometimes, you want to go later on in the round, hoping that the other players will move off the spots you need. Just small decisions like that can be so meaningful in this game. This game for me is a bunch of, you know, interwoven gears, and I really found it enjoyable to work out in my head. But I also felt it was just at the right level of complexity for that. You had to be looking at your goals and working towards them. And that's usually kind of three to four actions in the future. But I never felt kind of overwhelmed by that. My goals were always achievable, and I never felt like I had no hope to achieve them. It just seemed to me the right level of restrictiveness for me. As you can tell, I really, really like this game. Is it perfect? No. There are a few little niggly bits for me. Although I do think the game works well at all player counts, the two and three player uh, counts adds kind of Sultan's workers to the rondelle who will automatically move one step forward each round. I'm not sure the grey scrolls are, uh, scrolls are balanced at the lower player counts. Some of them are definitely easier to achieve to get their maximum points compared to others. Now in a four player game, those end of game scoring cards or scrolls definitely feel more balanced. Another t uh, item which some people might take as a negative are the times where you just have to arrest one of your workers because you can't do anything with them because within the free range that worker can do, maybe you have no money. Although that can be frustrating at times, I didn't take it as a major negative. You do get some money for it, but next round you're going to be able to place that worker exactly where you want it to be. It's not perfect, and I did still find it frustrating when I misplanned or another player messed up my plan, but at least it was some sort of mitigation. It's not just a do nothing. It is a, here's some money, and you get a tiny little benefit for next round. So where would I recommend this game? Yes, full stop. 
If you enjoy Eurogrames, I strongly recommend this one. I really, really enjoy the smoothness of the gameplay. I like the player interaction. You can have the perfect plan for your turn, but it requires another player to move off a space before you can move. So when are they going to do that? I enjoy the tough but not too complex decisions to be made on just about every action I was taking. Like that, even if you do hit a hitch in your plan you, and you have to rest a worker, you still get something for it. I like the way the game scales. I have just as much fun playing at two players as I did with four. I love how everything is intertwined with each other. And you're always saying, oh, I should do that. Oh, and that, and that. And of course, there's a lot of things you want to achieve, but you can't do it all. And for me, that's the perfect weight of game. For the minor negatives, I do feel that if you play with fewer than four players, you may want to pre-select a subset of the, the end game scoring tiles. And the only other negative is the fact that you can't have an action in a round where you have to rest one of your workers, which is definitely never ideal. But again, it is slightly mitigated. Overall, though, I'm going to give Subika a 9.5 out of 10 and Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. After my first play of the game, I knew I liked it a lot. And through subsequent plays, it's just gotten better and better for me. I have played this game three times in a single day, and I could see myself doing that again with this one. This game gets so much right for me that even the few minor niggles are vastly outweighed by my pure enjoyment I get from playing this one. It's one of my favorite games that have come out in the last six months to a year. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.